So it's really about finding the channels that your client is already in and getting yourself out there. Business of Architecture, episode 262. Hello, Architect Nation. I'm Enoch Sears, and this is the show where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for running a profitable and impactful architecture practice. Today is the second half of my conversation with Bryn Campbell. She's the co-organizer of the Pop Can Crit Symposium based in Vancouver this year, third year running, that examines the critical discourse around the business of architecture, specifically marketing, promotion, and communications. She's four years into her PhD program at the Azraeli School of Architecture and Urbanism in Carleton University, and she also serves in the Royal Architectural Institute of Canada in Ottawa. So today we discuss, as I mentioned previously, marketing and promotion, which as you know, is a particular passion of mine. We talk about value creation. We talk about how to communicate that, touch on some of what we talked about last week. And then Bryn also shares uh, some examples of firms that she sees that have been doing some innovative things that you might want to take note of. Also, she talks about uh, some of the top topics that came up in last year's Pop Can Crit. And then, of course, she talks about how you can attend this coming symposium that is going to be based in Vancouver. Now, if you haven't already, get free instant access to the four part architecture firm prop map video, which I've prepared specifically for podcast subscribers. You can get that by going to freearchitectgift.com. Enter your best email address on that page, and you'll get instant access as well as a free subscription to my weekly Business of Architecture Insider Report that goes out every week to architecture firm owners from around the world with the best tips and strategies for growing and creating an impactful practice. Today's podcast is sponsored by BQE Core and Sage Glass. BQE Core is an all-in-one firm management software. It has a beautiful user interface that allows you to keep track of the metrics that you should be looking at as you drive your firm, right? You wouldn't drive your car around at night without the lights on. BQE Core helps you make thoughtful and informed planning decisions about your cash flow, your profit, and hiring. Get a free trial at businessofarchitecture.com forward slash demo. Big thanks to them. Sage Glass is the manufacturer of highly intelligent, dynamic, reliable glass. Sage Glass tints automatically to optimize daylight, reduce glare and manage heat. I've experienced it myself. It's an incredible product. You probably know about it. Go check it out and see if it's right for your next project by going to sageglass.com. And now on with the show. Hey, Bryn, welcome back to the business of architecture. Thank you so much. So you've been integral in running the Pop Can Crit Symposium uh, up in Canada. Tell us about what, what is this? Pop Can Crit is a national panel-based symposium. Uh, we do this annually. So we bring together architects um, as well as people within the profession of architecture, like photographers, communication specialists, business development professionals, journalists. We bring them together from across Canada to talk about contemporary issues that are uh, relevant or important to the profession of architecture um, within a Canadian context. So we try to open up these dynamic uh, discussions and have a, a really open dialogue on what it means to practice architecture um, within that context. And what's the, what's the date of the next symposium? Next symposium is in Vancouver on October 19th. Okay, there we go. So this episode will go live before that. So it's on October 19th. Where can people go to find out more information in case they want to attend that? Yeah, we have a website. It's on spacing.ca uh, slash popcancrit. So spacing, S-P-A-C-I-N-G dot C-A at popcancrit. Uh, or sorry, dot C-A slash popcancrit. <laughs> That's right. One kind of one word, P-O-P-C-A-N-C-R-I-T. So let's, what was the last, last year's symposium? What was it focused on in terms of the content? Yeah, last year's symposium, we talked about the marketing and promotion of architecture in Canada. Uh, so we looked at uh, ideas around what it means to use marketing as a tool, what it means to promote architecture within the public realm, looked at like advocacy and activism within architecture uh, and really tried to open up conversations of what it means to uh, promote uh, the architect as well as promote architecture. Okay. So 
what does marketing and promotion mean in architecture? What was the, <laughs> some of the themes that came up last year around that? Yeah, last year, um, it was really interesting. It kind of came down to looking at architecture as a tool for communication. Uh, a lot of firms that were discussing this really looked at how marketing and business, um, they felt they hadn't been educated on it or they felt that they hadn't gotten enough information on it. But it was so important that, you know, they, they had to learn about it, go back and kind of come up with it. And marketing really for them became uh, that tool that they could use to communicate what their value proposition is, to communicate, um, you know, find their niche and communicate that to the client um, and communicate it to the public as well. Okay, so that's kind of the theoretical side. Uh, how exactly did they do that? What tools, what resources, what are we talking? What did that marketing look like to be able to make that value proposition? Uh, so different firms had different ways of doing it, of course, um, as everybody does. And it's really, um, you know, it depends on it depended on the scale of a firm. But there were firms uh, across Canada, you know, that were using marketing um, to help with uh, retention of their employees uh, and find ways to create a value around uh, what they do and try to find uh, what that core set of principles or values were for themselves and help them then align with clients and with employees uh, to do that as well. So they did that in a variety of different ways, um, depending on their firm, but they looked basically at how marketing could help them create a better value proposition and then use that to engage with clients. Uh, give me an example of what that would look like in a firm. So I think a lot of the time, uh, it kind of comes down to them deciding like, what are their value core values? What is it that they do? What is their niche within the marketplace? Uh, and then using that to find the clients that they want to engage with. So whether or not they're doing hospitals or community projects or they're doing high-end homes, uh, it doesn't really matter. It's about finding what's, uh, what is it that they do best uh, and what is it that they value about their work and they value about society. Uh, and then using that to be able to talk to clients about that and engage with them on their level. And why is it important that firms start with a, a definite niche? Because uh, a lot of the time architects, you know, we go to architecture school and we think that uh, we should be good at everything. And architects are, you know, architecture encompasses a lot of things. But if you don't have uh, a way to communicate what your niche is and what that one thing is that you really do well, uh, communicating it can get very convoluted. <laughs> so you have to find that one thing that you do really well and that one thing that you want to be doing and be aligned with um, and then use that as the way to kind of push that out there and really focus on that. Well, can you give me some examples of these of the one thing that a firm might be good at? Uh, yeah. So as I said, they might be, you know, really exceptional at um, high end design, for example, you know, maybe they do custom homes, uh, and they really focus on that. Uh, so they have to really focus on finding clients that are interested in custom homes and high end design. Uh, but they need to push that that is what they do best. And that is, you know, they should be hired to do that because that and that's what they're doing all the time. And they're really good at it. <laughs> and how would you propose that a firm, uh, you know, gets that message out there so that people get it? Yeah. So I think it comes down to, as I said, really trying to communicate that niche and communicate that core value. So they would maybe do things, um, and it's going to be different for every firm, of course, but, you know, maybe they're all about finding their core set of three or four principles or values that they have that and they're using that in all of their messaging and all of their communications tools whether it's on the client level through rfps or it's through social media or it's um you know within business practice or educational tools they just use those as their main message for everything Great. So it sounds like you're talking about having the message that's very clear that says we are experts and this is what we do best. And then mm -hmm. weaving that through all the communication, all the messages, brochures, RFP responses, everything to get that message across. 
Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And so they, they have a niche now. Say a firm has it. They've identified the one thing that they do exceptionally well. Uh, they've, they've worked on their messaging, so it's in all their materials. And then you mentioned the last part was actually finding and connecting with the clients. How does a firm go about that? What have you seen that works? Yeah, again, that's different for everybody, of course. But I mean, I think a lot of the time architecture firms get really excited, for example, about getting their uh, work in architectural publications, you know, being published in journal in magazines and things, but they forget that those are only seen by architects. <laughs> so it's really about finding the channels that your client is already in and getting yourself out there. Uh, you know, so if they're going to certain events or they're going to certain functions, you want to try and be a part of that. Um, if, you know, they've got certain things that they're um, aligned with on social media, you want to try and align yourself with that and just kind of being a part of that pros, those uh, channels that they're already in. Awesome. So putting yourself out there, finding any industry organizations, maybe conferences that a firm can go and speak at that has mm -hmm. some educational material where they can get in front of that dialogue. Exactly. And, and as you said, it's going to be different whether you're a residential firm, commercial firm. Yes, exactly. I mean, you know, if you were doing work in healthcare, then you'd want to go and try and speak at, you know, conferences that, you know, doctors and healthcare professionals are at, as an example. <laughs> okay. So let, let's say that you, uh, Bryn, were hired tomorrow to be the marketing director of a large firm. Uh, strategically, <laughs> where would you start to focus your efforts based upon what you've seen and what you know? Well, as I said, you know, every firm is different in what their strategies are. But I think for me, it would really just come down to, you know, getting a sense of what the values are for the firm, what their staff and their people that are working there do well and really focusing on putting that message forward. That's awesome. Another thing you mentioned earlier was uh, at the PopCan Crit that came up last year was this idea of activ activism and advocacy in mm -hmm. architecture. Tell me, how do you see that playing out in architecture? How have firms been using that? Yeah, so we actually had a panel that was on advocacy and activism. Uh, and on that panel, we had some architects, but we also had um, advocacy organizations that joined us, uh, such as the Winnipeg Architecture Foundation. Uh, so they really talked about how they wanted to um, communicate the value of architecture uh, and look at the history of architecture and the value that, you know, our buildings place within society and the urban context and communicating that to the public through different means. Um, such as uh, video and installations and exhibitions and things like that. Um, so that was really um, a strong theme is kind of putting together the history of architecture and helping the public to understand how architecture and architects have played a role within shaping society. Have you any firms that come to mind that are doing well with the advocacy and activism? Uh, I think uh, one of the firms that... Uh, was there last year was Acre Architects. And they really talked about how they wanted to be a part of education. They're working with um, the different provincial associations to kind of bring architecture into the classroom uh, within a younger demographic with kids. So trying to really push an understanding of architecture and space uh, to that younger generation. Awesome. So kind of reaching out. So we'll we'll take a look at that. Okay, so we talked about architecture as a tool for communication. We talked about activism and advocacy. Any other things that came up? Because the kind of the theme of our conversation right now is this marketing and promotion in architecture, mm -hmm. which was the theme of last year's Pop Can Crit. Were there any other subheadings or subtopics that you guys discussed at that past symposium that you, you can shed some insight for us on? I think last year, one of the best themes that came out of it um, was really seeing the passion that architects and the profession had for um, communicating what they do and really being passionate about their work. Um, too many times they felt a lot of architects seem to feel like, you know, architecture isn't valued as much by the public. And what came out of that was really pushing the idea that architects need to advocate for themselves. They need to advocate for the profession um, and show what their value is and what their worth is. 
Awesome. Well, we've covered a lot of ground. Bryn, is there any last thoughts that you'd like to share or insights, questions that I haven't asked you that perhaps I should have? Ooh, um, I think biggest thing for me would just be that, you know, marketing and communication is almost essential to being able to talk about architecture and kind of help to show the worth and value of what architects really do. Architects are integral to kind of making uh, design and being a part of society. And it's really just about communicating that value. Um, so I want to make sure that architects know that, I guess. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for being on the show today. Bryn, really appreciate all your insights and your research into this important topic. Thank you so much. And that is a wrap to discover how to create a more impactful firm. Perhaps you're stuck at a plateau. Perhaps you're frustrated with you've hit an income ceiling. You're not making as much money as you'd like. If you'd like to discover how to create a freedom firm, go check out a free training webinar that you can watch from the comfort of your own home or office at businessofarchitecture.com forward slash freedom webinar. You'll enter your email address on that page and you'll be presented with several sessions that you can register for to learn these powerful strategies for getting a freedom business. If you're curious about, as we talked about in today's episode, about how can I get more clients? How can I improve my marketing? What does it mean to market and promote as an architecture firm? I put together 60-minute training that dives deep into the most powerful and and um, instant win strategies that I've seen in the industry for bringing in the right kind of clients to your firm. You can watch that training for free by going to architectwebinar.com. Today's podcast was sponsored by BQE Core and SageGlass. BQE Core is an all-in-one firm management software that lets you harness the power of the cloud in your pocket. It's available to you when you travel to the job site. You can input job site notes. You can uh, keep track of projects. You can keep track of time reports. And then take that information and create beautiful KPI, which stands for Key Performance Indicator metric dashboard so you can see exactly where your firm is at at any second of every day get a free trial at businessofarchitecture.com forward slash demo sage glass is a special kind of tint uh, tinted glass that automatically tints to optimize daylight reduce glare and manage heat all while giving you unobstructed views of the outdoors you can create more sustainable spaces for people to live learn work and heal Go find out more. Check out see if it's right for your next project at sageglass.com. The views expressed on this show do not represent those of the host, and I make no guarantee, promise, pledge, bond, warranty, contract, commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.